Well, good evening and a very warm welcome to Choral Evensong on this, the uh, Feast of the Annunciation of our Lord to the Blessed Virgin Mary, uh, to those of you joining us here and also to those out there on the live stream. And please stand for our first hymn, number 313, for Mary, Mother of our Lord, and we'll be admitting verse 3. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him, through our Lord Jesus Christ, our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace and to ask on behalf of all people such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us kneel in silence and remember God's presence with us now. And we say together, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them for the penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant that with merciful Father for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh Lord, open thou our lips. And Lord, show thy grace. O oh 
God, make speed to save us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord send me praise. And this evening's psalm is number 40. Uh, which you can find on pages 186 and 187 of the Green Prayer Book, and we will be uh, praying verses 5 to 11. first reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 7, commencing at the 10th verse. Again the Lord spoke to Azar, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol, as high as heaven. But Azar said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child, and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. Here ends the first reading. <laughs>
The second reading is Luke 1, verses 26 to 38. The birth of Jesus is announced. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Here ends the second reading. <clears throat> believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. 
Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. O Lord, save the King. And you, thy ministers, with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thy inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is no God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty Father, who hast given thine only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification, grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve thee in pureness of living and truth through the merits of the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, from whom all holy desires, all just counsels and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ.
May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call him Emmanuel. Doesn't it feel kind of weird hearing those words from Isaiah a mere week after Easter Sunday, um, as we find ourselves transported back to the birth pangs of the nativity story? Well, not really. And with apologies to those of you who've heard me preach on this subject at length, but the cross is not God's one and only sacrifice. Arguably the greater was that the almighty and that all-powerful, omnipresent creator becoming a human being, becoming utterly vulnerable, a newborn baby born into poverty. It's simply beyond human comprehension what that must have felt like for God. And so this evening we celebrate the Annunciation of our Lord to the Blessed Virgin Mary. How very Catholic, and by Catholic I don't mean the Church Catholic, of course I mean Roman Catholic. Um, I imagine the late Father Kevin Eastall would approve, and only those who've been a church, attached to this church for as long as I have will probably get that reference. Um, but for many years, I've pondered why the Church of Rome exalts Mary to such an extraordinary extent. And it's often the case when you interrogate the history of the Church. Some of that is linked to power struggles and dogma, and it's all a little depressing. But preparing this sermon really made me think about it. Now, we don't get to choose our parents, do we? And I can see the whites of my father's eyes um, in the front row. Don't worry, Dad, if I had to choose, you'd always have been my first choice anyway. But God did, oh, but God did have a choice. A choice of who was to nurture him in and out of the womb when he'd opened himself up to that position of complete and utter vulnerability. And he chose Mary. He chose Joseph as well, of course, but we don't hear anything of Joseph after the visit to the temple during Jesus' youth. And most probably, he was much older than Mary and had passed away not so long after that. But Mary was not just the mother of God. She was the chosen mother of God. And we're all chosen by God. And we're all called by name, but only Mary was chosen to care for him when he became human. And that is quite some level of trust. So, with this realisation of the significance that she was chosen for that, I began to reflect on the Magnificat, which Mary would go on to say to Elizabeth just after tonight's passage because we say it or sing it every week don't we for those of us who say the daily office we say it every single day and um, the, sack, the choir sang it for marvellously for a second time this evening um, isn't that a bit of overkill well once again no it isn't because the Magnificat demonstrates what a remarkable girl Mary was and Believe you me, she would have been a girl, not a woman. And it speaks to who she was and how faithful she was and is, that she takes the burden gladly and obediently, no matter the social cost, that were it not for Joseph could have included expulsion from the community or even being stoned to death. It was incredibly risky. And the Magnificat is full to the brim with scriptural references and it's also revolutionary with all of that passion for social justice that Jesus would go on to expound. Mary had that greatest of all callings and by saying the Magnificat, we hold that high benchmark in our line of sight as Mary submits to God's will. If only we could do that ourselves. 
The psalmist said tonight, I delight to do thy will, O God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Just as Mary said, and as we should too. And callings can, of course, come in many, many different forms. Some, like Mary's, are something of a lightning bolt moment. My own, I felt like I was being hit by a sledgehammer um, when I was sort of called to, to sort of do what I do. Um, others are hit more gradually or more subtly, or perhaps it builds over a period of time, or um, uh, being discerned when looking back over past events, perhaps reflecting, reflecting in that way. But we must listen out for God's call, because he has a call for us, and look out for it. Last year, whilst in Nazareth, Sorrel Alistair and I visited the Church of the Annunciation. And this church is believed to be the very place that Gabriel appeared to Mary. And it is quite an extraordinary sight. Both outside and inside, lining the walls are pieces of artwork donated from around the globe, Oops, sorry, with vastly different interpretations of Mary, depending on which country they've come from, so the Japanese interpretation she's wearing a kimono. Everything is, is culturally adapted. And it's a sight that in these turbulent times, and, and with the Holy Land now at war, brings some measure of hope. And it is hope that has the profound relevance to the Annunciation. And it's that hope that Mary had, and that, and that through that one great act of obedience, the world was made flesh. And that's why it's so relevant to be thinking about the Annunciation so soon after we've thought about the Resurrection. Listen, listen for the call, for God has plans for us. He calls us by name and brings hope for us and for his kingdom. To quote the psalmist once again, I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. We too must proclaim the greatness of the Lord. Let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray.
Let us commend the world to which Christ showed the way to the mercy and the protection of God. At this time, we commend especially our uniformed groups, Halcyon House, Woodlands Care Home, and Formby Manor Care Home, and the residents of Birch Green, Oakfield Drive, and St Peter's Close. We commend to you the sick and the suffering, Diane, Felicity, Glyn, Hilary, Margaret, Peter, Rod, Stephen, Susan, Theo, those in hospital, our parishioners who are housebound or living in care homes, and all those affected in so many ways by global instability throughout the world, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially. We give thanks for the faith of those who have gone before us. As we take a moment of silence to think of all those close to us, who are no longer with us. And today we remember especially Keith Mowat, Francis Gilchap, David Bostock, Paul Corkhill, and all those whose anniversary of death or other special anniversary falls at this time. May they find rest in the Spirit's embrace, joining with the Blessed Mary, Saint Peter and all your saints, forever safe in your keeping. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the only ruler of princes, who dost from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth. Most heartily we beseech thee with thy favour to behold our most gracious sovereign Lord King Charles, and so replenish him with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that he may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endue him plenteously, plenteously with heavenly gifts. Grant him in health and wealth long to live. Strengthen him that he may vanquish and overcome all his enemies, and finally, after this life, he may attain everlasting joy and felicity through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone works great marvels, send down upon our bishops and curates and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, th these desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. And please stand as we sing our final hymn, number 315, Sing We of the Blessed Mother.
may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore.